So I received an email from one of my subscribers regarding the doctrine of election. Now, in this video, I'm not going to break down the truth this person needs regarding election. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play a clip of Paul Washer at the end of this video doing just that. But what I would like to stress to all of my subscribers is this. Stop trying to gain a perfect understanding of the Bible. Stop trying to make sense and make all the pieces fit together perfectly. And rather, just accept and believe what you read is absolute truth because that's what it is. Too many of you are trying to impose your own ideals and notions on onto doctrines that you may either not understand or may not like. And that's the problem. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a clip of Paul Washer breaking down the doctrine of election in a way that I could never do. And I hope it helps. I'm searching after the truth really hard in life right now. I'm uh, going to Edmond Seminary. And uh, I just uh, I want to understand the whole doctrine of belief and things like that. And, uh, you know, we've got my roommate's a Calvinist. And uh, he's been kind of trying to teach me a little bit. But I just want to know the truth. And they're all telling me that uh, you're the guy, you know. And uh, is there any way that you can, uh, you know, whatever, anything that, I, that you can. I can yeah, say something, but let me. You will go to my pastor's website, Anchored Truth. He has a series of sermons called Election Plain and Simple. It's some of the best you'll ever hear. Anchoredtruth.org. Uh, election Plain and Simple. What it all comes down to is this. You only have to ask, answer one question. Is man radically depraved? That's the only question you have to ask. Because if he is, if he's truly dead in his sin, if he truly hates God, if all men are equally evil, and they are, then the question is, how are you standing here right now believing God while some of your friends are more moral than you? Uh, still hate it. What happens if you say you opened up your heart? I'll say no, you didn't. You came out of the Because the Bible says God opened up Lydia's heart. If you say, well, I repented, and many of the repentance is an evangelical grace in all the confessions. It means it comes from God as a gift. If you say, well, I believe. He came out. He should the doctrines of grace. Also, is a gift. Pulled away from them a little bit by even moving to church. I know the Bible says, you know, that no man coming to God and visit him on the Bible. I mean, I know that. Well, my question is, is, you know, but he went is, is the grace, the uh, the offer of salvation for all men, or did God sit back in eternity and say, it's for you, 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 and you, and you, 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 and you, 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 Let's say there's no election at all. Okay? Let's just start from there. There's no election. Alright. And he said that he would be hungry. Now, there was like two or three groups. And let's say that men really are radically afraid and no man can come to God unless God draws them. So God comes down to every man and says, anyone who will bow their knee to me, anyone who will accept my son as their savior, will be saved. Since every man is radically depraved, they all hate God. They all blaspheme him, turn around, walk away, and go to hell. The whole world goes to hell. Is that God's fault? All right. Let's say that really is the reality. Let's say that the Bible is true and that men hate God that much. So who's going to get saved? Absolutely no one. And if God saves no one because everyone is evil and rejects him, is, is God wrong in doing it? Not hard to know. So that's what you got without election. You got the whole world hating God and going to hell. That's it. And the other option is this. Among these evil men, for his own glory, and to demonstrate his own kindness before the foundation of the world, he chooses a group of men out of there to demonstrate his glory in them. Is that wrong? Did he rip the other men off? What did he do? I've got two choices. God saves a group of people by his own sovereignty or everybody goes to hell. Everybody. Because men are that evil. See, your problem, see what you need to realize is this. If God, right now, were to throw open the door of hell and say, everyone who wants out of hell, the only thing you have to do is bow your knee to me and recognize my lordship, they'll slam the door and stay in hell. See, what you don't realize, because of the humanistic Christianity in America, you don't realize men are really evil. They really are evil. I'll give you an example. Any of you seen The Lord of the Rings? 
Saruman makes these orcs. They come out of the ground evil. Evil. Alright? Aragon, all the heroes in the movie, slaughter them like they were, you know, <laughs> insects. Slaughter. And every time an orc gets killed, what are you doing? You're going, yeah. Why? Because those orcs really are evil. They are evil. There's your problem. You don't think men are. Men really are evil. Men really deserve hell. They really do. And I believe that. I know that. Right. So, it says, you know, we talk about the doctrine of inability. That men cannot come to God. And Jesus said that. Alright, men cannot come to God. Now, if you say, well, if men can't come to God, then how can God judge them? That's like judging a blind man because he can't read. If men can't come to God, then man's not a, it's not a culprit, he's a victim. And here's a chapter to understand. Men cannot come to God because they will not come to God. And they will not come to God because they hate him. And therefore they're responsible. Men are evil. God is good. So, men hate God. They hate his law. They hate everything about it. Okay? It says of Joseph's brothers, they could not speak to him peaceably. Now, they spoke Aramaic. Why couldn't they speak to him? They could not speak to him peaceably because they hated him. Alright? That's why no man will ever come to God. If God comes down and says, alright, everybody make your choice. No one's coming to God. Why? They hated me. And that's why they're judged for their moral, it, their inability, because their inability is moral. They really hate God. So you've got a whole human race. Every one of them is fallen. Every one of them hates God. God comes down and says, who wants to be saved? Everybody who disputes the name of God walks into hell and slams the door. That's what you got. Because men really are evil. And if out of that God says, but for my own glory, I am going to redeem the people and give them to my son. By my own choice, by my own sovereign election. He's done wrong to know. He's the guy that would have been And now, how does he save them? Here's a question. Are you spiritually dead prior to conversion? Well, then how do you come to Christ? If you're spiritually blind, how do you see him? He draws me into it. That's your dead man. If some of it has to do with you, you're a dead man. If God calls your name, you hate him. You're not going to come. You're going to run farther away from him. That is why in all, listen very carefully, in all the Christian confessions, the old Christian confessions, in the Reformation, early Baptist confessions, you have been raised on this. If you believe in Jesus, you will be born again. All the early Baptist confessions say you must be born again in order to believe in Jesus. That's the difference. Because if I tell a dead man, look, you're dead, but there's a hospital over here. We put some electrodes on you, so get up and follow me over to the hospital. That's nonsensical. He's dead. If he can get up, he doesn't need to go to the hospital. So when Jesus looked at Lazarus, he said, Lazarus, come forth. There's a problem. Lazarus is dead. How does he hear the command? The command not only must be given, the moment the command is given, Lazarus must be resurrected to be able to even hear the command and respond. That's why you probably heard the gospel for many, many years. And you're sitting there, you didn't care, no big deal, maybe you made a Christian faith, nothing. And then one day, the gospel's preached, you're like, the blinders taken off, and not only that, you want it. Because some people say, well, what God does is he draws us all to a certain point and gives us a choice. You know what only problem. But if God only eliminates the mind of the sinner, then the more the sinner sees God, the more he's going to hate him. So he not only illuminates the mind, he changes the heart with a new heart for the first time you look at Jesus and you say, I love him, I'm irresistibly drawn to him, I want him more than anything.